previously on campaign mode. Welcome back everyone to Simple Rockets 2 campaign mode. Yeah, as you saw in that last clip, we had a successful uh, crash landing for our little rocket there, but the mission was a success, and as we talked about, we got the data that we were looking for, so now we're starting off the next mission. And instead of launching a rocket, I actually wanted to fly a little jet. Uh, and the reason is, since the only science experiment we've unlocked right now is the barometer, really all the science that we can get is going to be in the atmosphere, and if we can create a jet that can carry multiple barometers, um, per mission and can be reused, you know, we can get a lot of scientific data per mission and it's a little bit more economical than just crashing a rocket because um, those rockets are expensive. Now, this jet's going to be more expensive than the rocket, of course, um, but because we're going to be able to reuse it, that's going to make it a uh, more, more worthwhile investment overall. So, kind of my design for this jet is I want it to be super cheap uh, and that's about it. I want it to be a super cheap jet, yeah. It's very basic. It's going to have a very small engine. I really just enough to get it off the runway. Uh, because it's got a small engine, we're going to need pretty big wings for it. And the idea is, the wider the wingspan, you're going to get more lift force, um, even at lower speeds. So having long wings means we can travel at a lower speed because we have more lift area. Uh, so having long wings, a light craft, and a small engine is going to give us kind of the cheapest combination uh, that we can get. And we're going to really want to make this as light as possible. So you'll see that I don't even have a full length fuselage. Um, instead, I've got a fuselage just long enough to hold fuel and kind of hold the cockpit in the right place. And then the rest of the tail boom is just a single rod. Uh, I've replaced the fuselage with just a rod that goes out to the tailplanes. Um, right now, this design iteration, I'm looking at a V-shaped uh, vertical slash horizontal stabilizer, but final design, I'm probably going to throw that out and go with a more traditional uh, vertical stabilizer and then two horizontal stabilizers. But yeah, uh, we'll give it a little paint job. We'll add the barometers now. And this is kind of our first iteration of the craft. I'm um, going to change the wings a little bit now that I've got this kind of squared away. We're going to want to move that inlet because uh, I forgot to put an inlet on it. So we're going to put that inlet there. Um, and basically we're going to do like two inlets on the sides next to each wing. That'll provide more than enough oxygen for our jet engine. Um, so we'll put one right there, kind of get it shaped the way we want it. Um, again, this is all trying to minimize size, maximize efficiency. We're also only going to have those fuel pods on the side uh, as opposed to the whole fuselage carrying fuel because that'll make it, again, lighter and cheaper. Uh, so we'll make sure that looks good. Everything's squared away there and kind of change the shape of the inlet, make sure that it's getting enough air, and then we'll make it symmetrical on both sides of the craft. So there we go. Uh, we'll make sure that the textures look right for that, and that should do it. Now here is the final design iteration. You'll see that I've changed the tailplane. I've got a vertical and two horizontal stabilizers now. Um, the wings are canted slightly and I dropped them below the inlets there. The inlets got shifted forwards a little bit so it all kind of is packed nicely together. But yeah, there you go. That is the final design iteration. Now we're going to need to add some batteries to the craft. So I will take that uh, set the fuel type to battery, and we will make that symmetrical. So that'll sit just behind the cockpit. That changed the texture to look a little better. We'll use the the uh, that right there. Uh, change the color a little bit, and there we go. All right. Well, I'm pretty satisfied with how this looks, and we can go ahead and um, well, one one more thing we'll want to add is lights to the craft. You know, we'll have uh, tail and wingtip lights and we'll set them to blink and we'll offset the blinking intervals so that they uh, kind of blink one after the other. It's not really necessary for the mission, but it's kind of the, the touch that I like to add to make it look a little nicer. Um, we'll go ahead and add one on the top of the vertical stabilizer. And with that one, um, I'm not super familiar with plane law, but I'm pretty sure that that top light is supposed to be like a pulse that kind of almost like a radar tower is rotating like a beacon. Uh, so we'll set that one to pulse. We'll also add a uh, front running light. We'll tuck that in a little bit 
there so that we've got uh, we've got lights for coming in for landings. Point that so where it's kind of pointing towards the runway a little bit. Yeah, just like that. I like that a lot. Okay, so we'll uh, set all the lights to the landing lights command group so that they all activate at the same time. Be really frustrating to have to try and manually activate those lights. And uh, let's go ahead and change the color. I don't know exactly why I chose that yellowish for those batteries. We'll set them to white. I think that looks a little better. And here we are on the runway. Now we're going to uh, throttle up and start our flight here. Um, maybe time warp a little bit. We want to actually see the lights on the craft that we created. See them blinking there. Um, uh, everything looks good. We'll go ahead and activate the engines. So yeah, this is uh, sped up just a little bit, but we are off at a start. And you'll notice the first thing is it's not going very fast. We're at 52 meters per second, and we're almost all the way down the runway, coming up 70 meters per second, um, getting towards the end of the runway here, and we're going to have to pull up. I'm going to go ahead and take our first science reading. Uh, we get 27 science, and we are off the ground at just under 100 meters per second. We have a takeoff speed of about 95 meters per second. So that's very slow. Um, this aircraft is kind of like a glider. It's very efficient and takes off pretty easily. So here we are cruising just over 100 meters per second. We're going to go ahead, gain some altitude. Um, we're going to gain a little bit of altitude before we activate that second barometer. So the first one I activated was at sea level because uh, we haven't taken a recording at sea level. Now in the last mission, we took a recording at 30,000 feet and at, I believe it was 1,000 feet. So we'll fly up to um, maybe 2,000 feet. I don't know. We're going to fly to a different altitude and take another measurement. Because uh, the, basically the rule that I'm setting for myself is you can't just take barometers and take the same measurement at the same planet at the same altitude over and over and over again. You have to mix it up. So what I'm doing is flying to a unique altitude and I'm going to take another measurement at a different altitude. Um, so eventually I'll run out of altitudes where I can take new measurements and I'll have to unlock a new technology or come up with something else to do. We'll go ahead and bank around trying to uh, point ourselves at the runway again. So we're flying west now looking at that nav ball, flying back into the sunset. Um, there we go, level it out. We're at 3,000 meters right now, uh, three kilometers in the air and let's see try and find that landing center. We're kind of high up, so it's hard to see exactly where the landing center is. We're going to make sure that we are actually on course so we don't miss it. Looking for it. I am not seeing it down there. It is a little dark, and the shadows from those sand dunes are not making it easy to see. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and start dropping my altitude, get a little lower to the ground, because um, we should be coming back on it here pretty soon. Yeah, just, I'm not seeing it. Hopefully that light will show it if, if I get close enough. Here we go. It should be like just ahead of us now. Getting real low. Under a thousand meters. Still not seeing it. Still not seeing it. Oh, we'll pull up. Oh, there it is. It is just below us and we are off to the right of it a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of speed up time a little bit. We'll go past it again, and then we will come around for landing in the same direction that we took off. Now, I did not leave a lot of my uh, a lot of space here to do an actual approach, so this is going to be pretty tight. I'm going to bank hard, come back around, oh, drop my landing gear, make sure that I'm actually ready to land. Pull up, pull up, pull up, pull up. Ooh, we're going to miss the runway. Yep, just missed the runway. It's okay, we'll put it down next to the runway. Not a big deal. This thing is a super light glider, and we can turn around and park it on the runway properly here. Let's go ahead and turn it around. Whoa, 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 whoa. Kind of on one wheel there. There we go. All right, so we're back on the runway. We can go ahead and call that a successful mission and look at the spreadsheet and see uh, what the results were for that. Yeah, that is a successful mission right there. All right, looking at the ledger, the plane was $1.6 million, so I have $1.6 million taken out of my ledger for that ultralight jet. Now, you'll see vehicles in the fleet. I have written there ultralight jet one. Because we were able to recover it and return it back to the launch pad, I'm saying that that jet is recovered and we can use it again for future missions without having to pay for it. 
you'll also see we've got our astronaut roster. Jebediah Drood was our astronaut for that mission, or our pilot for that mission, so he has one flight under his flight record now. And we'll see the results from that mission. We collected uh, 54 science from that mission. It was 27 science points from the barometer, but because we returned the jet, we get double the science, so we get 54 science total. Uh, and from that 54, I'm going to go ahead and unlock gyroscopes and communications equipment, which will be necessary for our next mission. Uh, the next mission that I'm planning on doing for this series is sending a orbital class spaceship. We're going to actually do a contract to earn some money um, so we don't go bankrupt doing all these science missions. Now let's go ahead and switch over to the tech tree, and we can take a look at what we've actually unlocked here. So we've unlocked all the Tier 0 tech starting out, basic rocketry and atmospheric flight. But now we've unlocked gyroscopes and communications, which you see there in yellow, and then the two green ones in Tier 1, which are basic solid rockets and basic liquid rockets, we've also already unlocked. So we have almost all the technology we need to take on our next mission, and we are ready to go. Well, with that, uh, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.